Hi, I'm Jason McComb-Smith, author of Elemental Design Patterns, and here with the third of three tips that I've been asked to give you for keep in mind when you are reading the book. And that third one is architecture is infrastructure. Uh, this is a kind of a larger point that threads its way through the book that uh, if you can keep this one, this one point in mind as you're reading it, I think you'll get a lot more out of the book. Um, software design is kind of an odd beast. We generally think of you know, the design of the software as uh, how we're going to accomplish the tasks that we need to do by the end of the day. And you know, it, it tends to focus a little bit narrow on the implementation. And you, know, there's a, you can talk about form versus function, and, and engineers in particular are like, oh, function all the way. Form is just, yeah, it's just the skin. You know, it's just the, the, the paint. It's, it's the niceties. And it's really not. Uh, Steve Jobs has a great quote that uh, design is how it works. It's not the skin. It's, it's how it works. And that is just as true in software engineering as in any other discipline. Uh, software design is about creating the infrastructure within which you want to do work. It is about enabling software engineers to do their best work by creating this, this framework, creating a well-formed structure uh, that, that they can utilize, that they can leverage. And you can think about it, there's absolutely no reason why we need to be using programming languages at all. We could be using assembler. We could be poking bits directly on a, on a binary stream and do exactly the same functionality that we're doing now. But the development of programming languages in general has been a way of elevating the tools that we have available to us. Software design is exactly the same sort of thing. It is just as, as programming languages, each generation of programming languages have used the best practices of the generation before, found the concepts that worked best, and made them primary tools in the next, next language generation. Software design is about finding the concepts that work best in creating this infrastructure. And design patterns are the expression of those that we have best right now, which is how do we express the best practices of design in a way that we can now use them as, as new tools. The elemental design patterns are a way of giving us a well-formed methodology around the design patterns literature. Uh, I like to think of it kind of like the design patterns literature right now is a bit like alchemy was in the medieval ages. It's, it's, it, it works, you know, but we, we're not really quite sure how a lot of the time. There's, there's a, a piece missing of, of uh, understanding underneath. What we're missing is the periodic table. We're missing the predictive power of, of uh, you know, Mendeleev's work with uh, organizing the, the, the knowledge of, of chemistry into a well-formed table. It's kind of what the elemental design patterns are. I talked in the previous tip about the formalisms. Well, we have the formalisms, we have our table, we have predictive power now of being able to look at points in that table and, and say, you know, what the concepts of programming in that space should look like. Um, but all of this is distinct from the functionality side. It's distinct from the algorithms, the data structures. Most of the things that we focus on is particularly when we're, we're starting out in, in programming. Instead, this is the, the periodic table of software design. So it is the foundation for coming up with the, uh, uh, the engineering of software engineering, essentially. It is the foundation for allowing us to have that rigor and that process for creating the infrastructure within which we are going to solve the, the problems and do the actual work that we want to do, whether it's you know, creating a, a word processor or uh, running a bank or you know, producing the latest you know, first-person shooter, whatever. There are commonalities of design that transcend those domains, and there are commonalities of architecture and infrastructure that are independent of the particular task that you're trying to solve. And that's what design patterns are. They are that 
that uh, best practice of architecture and infrastructure. So if we look at, uh, it, it, say we look at, at buildings, I mean, just because design patterns originally came from architecture in the first place. Christopher Alexander's work with civil architecture is what, in, in the 60s is what kicked off design patterns in software engineering. And uh, we can take a look at some examples from, uh, from real life buildings. Down in Durham, North Carolina, there's a fantastic section of town that used to be tobacco warehouses. And these are massive, massive brick structures that were designed to solve one problem. Well, two really, but how do we store and cure the tobacco? Fair enough. So it's, you know, high ceilings and, and thick walls and just these beautiful, beautiful buildings uh, that over the eight years have taken on these, you know, this, eight, this patina of, of age and, and, and just real solidity to them. The problem they were trying to solve was storing and curing tobacco. Fair enough. They built an infrastructure that provided shelter, it provided temperature control, it provided ventilation, it provided a number of uh, features that were needed to solve the problem at hand. When the tobacco industry, obviously, and fell on, on harder times, the tobacco warehouses closed. And folks were looking for ways to revitalize the area. The tobacco warehouses are now some of the most desired living spaces in the entire Durham, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, Triangle area. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. What they did was they went in and took the infrastructure. They took these thick walls, this ventilation, these high ceilings, and they realized that all of this, they the tremendous windows in, in these buildings, all of this not only solved the original problem, but also solved a different problem, which is people would really like living here. It's got the high ceilings, the ventilation, it's got the light, it's just, it's, it's great, it's a great space for people to live in. So they went out, they went in, they tore out all of the, the rails, they tore out the, uh, uh, the equipment, they tore out all of the pieces, the bits and pieces that were specific to storing and curing tobacco. They left the infrastructure and then put in new pieces of walls, plumbing, et cetera, that were specific to the new problem, which was housing people. And they ended up with a beautiful solution. But the point is they reused an existing infrastructure. They reused something that was never intended for the problem, which it inevitably ended up solving. But it was one that it was an infrastructure that was so solid and flexible that it allowed for the solution to problems that were never foreseen by the original designers. And that is the hallmark of excellent design, whether it's software, whether it's hardware, whether it's, you know, whatever you're doing in life. Excellent design is when someone can take a look at what you've created, the infrastructure of it, and repurpose it for something that it has never been, it was never intended for. That is innovation, that is how we have progress, and really that's the core of much of the development of software engineering, is looking around at what we have and saying, oh, I can use this for that. This is, this is a piece that I can put there, and this is, you know, this is another piece that I can, I can I, uh, appropriate and, and mold and modify the way I need it and put it in place. So while we have this grand tradition of an almost artisan tradition of software design or software creation. Uh, software engineering is a way of providing the rigor behind the girders, the beams, the bricks, the windows, the load bearing beams, the forces at hand, making sure gravity doesn't finally take over and collapse the thing if you're talking about a building. It's a way of providing that, that the, the firmest, most uh, solid infrastructure that we can create that can then be modified on the fly by uh, the artisans into something that is completely unexpected and completely novel and wonderful. Thank you very much. Elemental Design Patterns, I'd love it if you would go buy the book. And uh, in any case, welcome to the software community. I look forward to seeing what we can do.